Hello, welcome to the My Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today I wanted to look in the Hypershade. The Hypershade can be found if you go to Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. It looks like this little blue cube, cue ball icon here, which you can also see up here in the uh, user interface. So I click this blue cue ball icon to open up the Hypershade. So in this Hypershade window, we have lots of different uh, categories or uh, containers of different material or, or information. And I've gone over this in other videos in the past, so I definitely recommend uh, if you haven't yet and you're not sure how the Hypershade kind of works on a functional level, to perhaps go to my Maya 101 playlist and find the one as an introduction to the Hypershade there. And there's also previous videos on my channel talking about the Hypershade in a more general terms. Uh, here you can see I've already kind of taken the liberty of creating a whole bunch of different materials in this scene, with different colors and things. And we're going to use these different materials as examples. So what we're going to look at today specifically are the bends. So down here in the lower left corner of the Hypershade, you can see we have the Create tab and the Bends tab. We can click back and forth between these. The Create tab is typically what we're looking at most of the time. As we can see here we have all the different materials we can create and utilities and so on. But if we click on the Bins tab, we have this window and it has right here a Master Bin. So by default you should have this. So this Master Bin, you can think of these, and you can't look at the icon here, it looks like a little uh, box, like a shoe box or as if you're any, if you're a nerd like me, you know, like a comic book. Uh, collection box where you put all your comics and you know all the sleeves and so on. Uh, it kind of looks like that to me. Uh, but you can store your different materials into bins. So right now you see I have you know lots of materials here. If I'm looking for a specific one, it might be difficult to find, except for maybe looking for the colors. But even then, I have a couple of green ones and a whole bunch of white ones and stuff like this. So if I knew, for example, that and again, it's just for examples' sake, so you can kind of see what all these. I'll make this a little bit bigger. I'll go ahead and just expand this to fill my screen. So we have all these different materials, and they're not really named properly or anything like that, but we have different kind of, this was kind of this uh, glowing pink one, and we had red ones and green ones, and lots of white ones and so on. So let's say I wanted to organize these a bit, so I wanted to be able to find things more easily. Well, down here I can create an empty bin with this button here in the upper left corner. Click it. It'll ask you to name it. So let's just say, for example, all the colors. I'll call this one colors. So here, if I click on the colors bin, it's empty. And so all the materials vanish. So I'm not looking at any materials at all. Master bin, I can go back and I can see all of them. So if I wanted to add all the materials I have that are obviously colored, you know, the black one, the green ones, the red ones, and so on, I can add them to this colors bin. So there's a couple different ways to add them. I can select the orange one, for example, has this kind of yellow border now, and you can see it over here as it's selected. I can right-click on the colors bin, and I can add selected. You can also see I can remove selected if it's already in there. I can take it out, and so on. So add selected, okay. So now if I click on the colors bin, just that orange one shows up. Go back to master bin, all the rest show up. I can also middle-click and drag the red one, for example, down here into colors. Click it. Oops. There we go. So the red one and the orange one shows up. So middle click the green one, drag it down here, let go. There we go. So I can do that as well. I can also select multiple at once. So the blue one, I can hold down shift, select the yellow one, shift, select the pink one, right click, add selected. So now all those are added as well. I can just keep going. Let's see. The black one here. So as many as you want to add, you can add to a bin. So this way you can narrow down the materials in your scene in case you have a whole bunch like I do and you want to find just this one. Let's say you have a material bin that's for all the materials for a certain character. Let's say I want to rename this colors bin, for example. I can right click it, go to rename. I can call it, for example, let's say I have a character in my scene, I can call it character. Or if your character has a name, you can call it, say, uh, Commander 
or something like that. Hit OK. And then so now you can apply all the materials that are associated with that character into this bin. So if you have several characters in your scene all with different materials, you can say, no, I want the commander. And I can just see that, that uh, character's materials. And then you can say, oh, this orange one is actually for a different character. I can right-click on the commander bin and remove selected, for example. So that's no longer in the bin. Let's make a couple bins here. So I'll make another bin. Actually, this middle button you see here, it says create bin from selected. Okay. So if I select, for example, my defaults, select default, Lambert 1, Particle Cloud, and I'm holding, make sure I hold Shift while I do that, select all these uh, kind of default materials that are in every scene. I can create a bin from the selected materials. It'll ask you for a name, so I can call these you know, defaults. Hit OK. And so here in my defaults bin, all those materials I had selected are automatically added when I use this middle button here to create a new bin from the selected materials I have selected. So commander, defaults, go back to master for example. And let's see, let's make, um, let's grab a couple of these colors again. So I'll grab this yellow one, shift select, I'll grab some of these glowy white ones, a whole bunch of these in this particular scene. And I'll add a new bin from selected. I'll call these ones uh, glow, glow, glowy stuff. <laughs> you can call it whatever you want. Hit OK. OK, so now I have the glowy stuff bin. And you can see here that yellow one's in there. Under my commander bin is also the yellow one. So you can have a material in multiple bins, is what I'm going to get at here. Default, commander, glowy stuff. But let's say, for example, that yellow one, you wanted that one to only stay in the commander bin and not in the other one. I can select that yellow material here, right-click on the commander bin, and say Make Selected Exclusive. If I go back to glowy stuff, you'll see that yellow one's now no longer in there. It's been removed from all the other bins and just is in this one bin. It's also going to be in the master bin. You know, the master bin will always contain all the materials no matter what, so it's not going to remove it from that one. So the commander bin here now has the yellow one, while the glowy stuff one does not. Our default still has that, and so on. Now you can also, if you wanted to select all the materials that are in the bin, you can right-click on the bin. You can say select content. So it'll select all those materials, so then you can do uh, whatever you might want to do in that case. You can also, this third button here on the toolbar says select unsorted content. So we click on the master bin and click on this. You'll see all the materials that are selected have not been added to bins. So just the ones that are not in a bin get selected. So then if you wanted to then add those to a bin at that point, you could then click the middle button there to make a new bin from the selected materials. And we'll call these just say miscellaneous, like they're unsorted and don't really refer to anything in particular. Hit OK. So now I have commander, defaults, glowy stuff, and then this miscellaneous bin with all the other ones. Make sure, one thing is, that's uh, kind of important is you'll notice I have to click in the black area of the hypershade to remove that selection because it's really easy to accidentally have a whole bunch of material still selected and then you go do something else and add a bin or whatever not realizing that you still have those materials selected and you add them to a new bin by accident. It's pretty easy to do that. Just make sure you deselect everything before adding or changing a bin. And then of course if I don't want this miscellaneous bin anymore I can right click it and say either empty it so I can still have the bin that just nothing in it, or you can right click on the bin and delete it. It removes the bin from the list. So it's master bin, and I still have these other bins as well. You can also right click and duplicate a bin. So if I want, say, let's say, let's go to defaults here. I say I want to keep all my defaults, right click and duplicate. Now I have a new default bin. They're both the same. But in this defaults bin, let's say I right click and rename it, and I'll call this one, you know, Lambert 1. Lambert 1 is the classic standard default material. I'll just call that bin Lambert 1. With Lambert 1 selected, I can right click and say make selected exclusive. So it's no longer in the defaults bin, but it is in the Lambert 1 bin and, you know, stuff like this. Actually, this Lambert 1 bin has all the other ones too. So let me grab all those, right click, and I can say remove selected. There we go. Now Lambert 1 has just Lambert 1. Glowy stuff, defaults without Lambert 1, commander, and then our master, and so on. So the bins are mostly useful when you know you have when you have a whole bunch of materials in your scene and you want to really categorize them and organize them. 
especially useful for like characters or props or things where you have several different materials applied to them and you can organize them in this way. So we have lots of interesting uh, functionality here with the bins. Again, like I said, I, I don't think I've ever used the, these bins. Um, I had a comment in one of my previous videos asking about them. They, they later clarified that actually it wasn't the bins they had a question about, but it made me want to question the bins and what are they used for. So I kind of wanted to research this a little bit. And yeah, that's actually pretty useful. So anyway, I hope you found this video uh, illuminating, as I did, <laughs> and find the bins useful for your own projects in the future. If you have any questions or any other comments, please feel free to add those below. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you later.